early 1950s, Toledo, Ohio, like many other cities, was recovering from past World War II times and looking to transition into a new era. The heart of the city, downtown, was an area that was once thriving and booming with business and civilian life and now was desolate, and city officials saw this as a problem. In 1965, the Downtown Toledo Associate Committee was formed to begin to discuss what could be done to help this problem. The committee was comprised of retailers on the downtown area and served two primary functions to work as a civic group consisting of civilians teaming with local government officials to come up with ways to revitalize the downtown and to come up with a master plan for city development for the next 30 to 50 years. This movement toward planning and development in the city was a new phenomenon adopted by many cities in America around this time. It was based on the ideology that there is a connection between the physical environment and civic engagement, and moreover, that city government officials had a place in getting involved with this type of planning. Housing and city rebuilding was thought to have a relationship with the social environment and in turn affecting the economic growth of the downtown district. The Downtown Toledo Associates used this philosophy and came up with a master plan proposal in 1956 inspired by the vision of Toledo that was envisioned by Norman Bell Geddes. He had an exhibit called Toledo Tomorrow. He was an artistic designer and architect known for his visions of the future, and Toledo officials bought into this vision and used it as the model of what was to come for the city. There was a central planning tour booklet in 1959 that laid out all the plan entailed. The goal of the master plan was to reverse the trend to suburbia. In the 1950s, there were many citizens who worked downtown in Toledo, but as the migration of African Americans from the South moved up north around this time, due to racial tension, many of the white citizens who were employees began to move out to the suburbs. In this country, this happened in many cities and was known as the white flight. Housing projects were sought out as a way to coerce these employees from moving to the suburbs. This was the main focus of the 1956 master plan proposal. There is a specific project included in the master plan that spoke of an area adjacent to the downtown business district in the Maumee River of decrepit 70 to 100 year old buildings and to replace them with modern high-rise and garden apartments that will attract high middle-class executives and their families. They wanted to lure back people from a booming suburbia into the heart of the city. In this planning document, Mr. Orville Bauer stated, Many busy executives are tired of commuting. They want to live near their work, and will if we provide them with bright, cheerful surroundings and privacy without feelings of confinement. This project idea he spoke of became known as Vistula Meadows, a project that would consist of high-rise, 16-story apartments with two-bedroom suites where tenants on the first floor could have an unobstructed view of the other buildings, and also two-story apartments that were seen out of the windows of the high-rise. They would also have window walls to allow for the tenants to have that feeling of not being confined to their homes and that the, ci the city really was theirs to embrace and contribute to. Mr. Lawrence F. Murray, the director of the Toledo-Lucas County Planning Commission, 
felt that the Vistula Meadows will have important effects on the whole community and will expand from downtown to outlying areas to stimulate a new wave of growth in the city's central business district. This plan was put into works by plans that sectioned out buildings in the downtown Toledo area and surveyed them for marketability and reuse appraisal by the Urban Renewal Agency of Toledo. The ones not deemed as marketable and reusable were deemed as slums and to be torn down. Many of these buildings were left in place from decades of decline and were abandoned warehouses and businesses that once were in their livelihood, but now were just vacated. The plan was to rid the city of this type of look and to bring business and hope to one day see a revitalized downtown Toledo. Today, Toledo is not revitalized and faces these same issues of abandoned warehouses, businesses, and there still exists the fear of a dying downtown. There have been additions to the downtown to attract business and to promote economic growth, such as the Mud Hen Stadium for the minor league baseball team, the Seagate Center, the Huntington Arena, the Kosai Science Center, renovations to Promenade Park, and other additional restaurants were added, and landscape renovations, but there is still missing component, the people. The buildings and structures exist, but there seems to be a disconnect with the actual inhabitants of the city. Past and present plans of revitalization from city officials and retailers, both bank on business and retail, as tools to shift the decline of decay of Toledo and to shift the social, social and cultural values. But cases such as this one show that maybe this is not the answer. As a current citizen of Toledo, I too hope to see Toledo one day revitalized and hope that the citizens themselves will actually have a voice in their Toledo for tomorrow.